This is fire agate. Where do you find such high end rough? Well, the best way I know how is to go to the source and mine it yourself. But that's not always such an easy task. There's a wonderful place in Arizona known as the Deer Creek Fire Agate Mine. And from time to time, David Penny opens it up to the general public. You can pay for time on the belt and be able to pick off rough that will produce stunning gems. This is our experience. Mixed all through the rock. Yes. Now um, we have to actually mine this out and allow the rock to decompose natural in nature, which which then the rock becomes like this, and which has actually just turned to powder dust. And the agates then come out of out of there uh, in in uh, complete and natural form, and and uh, are undamaged. Most of this has taken uh, as much, uh, some of it decomposes in five years, some 10 years, some 15, yeah. some over 20 years before the rock completely breaks down and frees up all the agates that are trapped inside of it. Yeah. And so by taking the material out and putting it into um, what I call ore, um, That then is allowed to to come out, and then the dirt itself will just fall through the machine. You never have to see the dirt again, and then all what you've got is the uh, uh, high-end agates. So what's this big layer right here? There's is this a cap, and the agates are underneath that that layer, or yes. how do you? In, in uh, what occurred here? Was this is a, a volcanic flow that cooled very slowly and, and then shattered because it actually cooled quick enough to shatter like a marble would in a furnace. But that heat uh, maintained a, enough heat above uh, that the uh, uh, silicates dissolved, I think, at about 670 degrees Celsius, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And that dissolved silica then flowed down into the crevices that were where you can see this was many different types of rocks thrown from several active volcanoes going at the same time colliding and and filling the voids creating cavities and so then by having the heat sink above it allowed the uh, uh, and down in it, some of the rocks in here are the same materials that actually were thrown out of the volcano before, as the lavas were running out. Okay. And that's part of the, the formation of it. Part of the magic is, is even more beyond that because it, your stones have to be, um, uh, have a lot of different things occurring. One of them is the earliest form of silica is opal, and your next formation is starts to be sedimentary agates, and that was really rich with a lot of um, minerals. One of the more prominent minerals is iron, uh, which you see. But in general, the um, fire layer itself is more like a crystal structure that formed above and with the saccharite needles from the fact that you had all these things going on in one stone at the same time yeah. in the formation and many uh, thousands and, and tens of thousands of years just to maybe form one fire agate yeah. in, in, in time to have done that. All right, so this is the machine that we at Different Seasons Jewelry refer to as the Geminator. And I, the final conveyor belt that the agate comes over
tailings of what was produced. And then on the other end here, this is the wash, this is the screen stuff that is so small that most likely fire agate isn't in it. If it is, it's so small that it's not really going to be useful for jewelry grade. And that's the clean muck that comes off of it. And here's the modified machine. As you can see, there's a grate up top to eliminate the very, very big rocks, but some fairly large sized chunks come through, as you've seen in other videos or other parts of this video. There we go, the geminator. This is the Cadillac of mining, in my experience. I can't imagine jackhammering it and sledgehammering it and, <laughs> and doing it any other way. The amount of work it takes to get a fire agate out of this and over here is a luxury in my opinion. And the amount of material that this can go through and allow you to see in such a short period of time is priceless. Here it comes! Wait, pick your first fire agate out of there. Okay. Find one. Oh. Find one? Oh, that's a rock. No, it's a fire agate. Oh, is it? Okay. It's Come here. Yep. It's got fire, too. A little teeny fire agate. It's mostly cold. Look at Chloe. All right, so what you're showing me right now is a Deer Creek fire agate that you and your daughter Tina cut. Can you tell me a little bit about that and how old she was and everything when she helped you with that gem? She mainly started cutting um, at around 14. She was actually demonstrating cutting cutting fire agates when she was um, 11 years old and at the gym shows and my, my other daughter Desiree she was uh, nine years old when she was demonstrating the uh, cutting fire agates so it's not not a situation that uh, takes a uh, uh, it, it just takes patience and and uh, the love for for the product that really makes a difference on uh, what you can achieve and if you're going to be able to create a, a magnificent gym in fire agate. I agree. This is another piece that Tina did when she was a teenager. And uh, um, uh, this particular piece, I usually did most of the hard sign and windowing all the time. It's another and, magnificent gem. Uh, but I. Uh, and I would sometimes do the polishing, because polishing is, is, is just more tedious time and stuff like that. But dexterity um, is, is um, one, of the, one of the most uh, critical parts in it, is, is just to be able to have uh, good control and, and learn how to follow the particular uh, bands of fire um, and, uh, uh, and and see where where you want to go and then realize what kind of a grit you want to to use and one of the main things is on fire I, is to um, never touch the fire um, the, even the top of the fire with any, anything much coarser than 400 or, or 600 grit uh, diamond. Um, if you do, the uh, grit size can actually go deep enough into the 
the fire bands that you, by the time you polish the scratch out uh, from that, you, you, you will have burned through a lot of the fire. Yeah, this one keeps me up at night. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a great blue right oh, here. This is the first lizard you've found on your own and caught. What do you think? Bro? I've caught my first one on my own. I found my first one on my own, mommy. Okay, let's keep it low. Keep it low. Hey, 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 it's okay. Here. Can you put it in the sunlight so we can see it in the sun? Aww. Chloe's first lizard. Whoa. What do you say to the lizard before you let it go, Chloe? Thank, thank you for not running away in certain times and just when I let you go, you just stopped. When when I dropped you, you just stopped and I just picked you up and then it was just then I just let you go and then I just let you run around and then you just came back. Bye, lizard. Say bye, lizard. Look, he's just standing there. Yes. Hi, little guy. You have to go. Come on. Let's go. Go. Come on, go. Where do you go?